Does it sound well with this or? Hello, Georgie, how are you? Hi, Nicole, how are you? I'm good, I'm great. I'm so happy to have you on today. So this is Georgie, I, I mess up your last name every single time. Will you say it the way you want me to say it now? So it's uh, Georgie Benardete, but people call me Georgie B. No, day. I like it, so I you say it right. Yes. I didn't know about adding like the Miami flavor for you. <laughs> which which I, I dressed for you today. So I'm very thankful. I love it. I love it. Brought out the Miami girl for you. So just to give everybody a little bit of an understanding of why I'm so blessed to actually have Georgie here today. Georgie has been involved in, you name it, she's been a technology investor, an entrepreneur. She's co-founder and head of strategy for Shopbeam. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. It's, um, it's a universal card for digital publishers. They get to monetize their content seamlessly. It's, I would tell us all about it, but I'm going to have you do that. Um, she's been, she's managing director at Multicultural Capital. It's an independent financial co consulting company that's focused on renewable energy. You started your career at OPIC, Coopers and Librand, and JP Morgan. You're a committed environmentalist who founded Yes, yes List. Yes, she List. Yeah. Now that it's your turkey. Now you need to learn Turkish. <laughs> Largest green portal. Um, you're also part of Al Gore's climate project as a speaker, a founding member of the Charlie Alberti R21 Foundation in Latin America, and a lead international fellow. Uh, you're an active investor in Bell Capital USA, which is an early stage VC fund that promotes investments in companies with strong female leadership. Founding curator of the World Economic Forum's Global Shapers Hub in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And oh my gosh, Masters in Science. Georgetown, <laughs> Woodrow Wilson Foundation, no, no. and the part that I do want to speak about because you just got back is I want to talk a little bit um, about what you've done with the young global leaders um, with the World Economic Forum and your trip to China. So we'll go into that in a little bit, but let's just first start off. I want to hear about, I gave you your whole bio, and I want to hear a little bit about what is it that got you to where you are. We've moved in all sorts of different areas. Um, I'm, I'm curious, like, what, what is that, the one thing that has allowed you to be present and available and totally action and kicking ass in all these different segments? Is there, is there a, a one like, little thread that pulls all these things through? I think, uh, thank you so much. I think the one thing that came to my mind as you were asking me is curiosity. Ooh. So, um, like I'm a deeply, deeply curious person and uh, I'm a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. So what I think is, it has weaved um, along my career and my life is a sense of curiosity, um, openness to the present and, uh, and, and, and trying to weave passion in everything I do and passion and purpose actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, sometimes the, the decisions have been um, extremely well thought out. So example, like I knew, for example, I wanted to go to grad school and I wanted to study foreign service, but then, you know, even though I thought I was going to go to work at the UN and save the world, um, I discovered investment banking and I said, you know what, that resonates with me. Let's try this out. So I think at every moment I've been very present as the, the options emerge mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've used a lot of, I guess, intuition and, uh, and again, intuition and curiosity to then take the next step. Um, so I think that's, that's a little bit what has defined those decisions. I love it. I, I, I love when anybody describes themselves as lifelong learners, especially when their favorite topic of reference is themselves. <laughs> I, know, I mean, it might sound narcissistic, but it's like, well, no, 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 no. Me, and what do I want to do next? And, you know, what would support me most or what could be this grand vision and not lock yourself into, okay. Well, if I did JP Moore, I should be going dot, 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 dot. Exactly. You know? exactly. So, um, you sound perfect. So if you want, I think you can drop your, your mic because I want to see your face. You can just let go of me. Ah, perfect. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the conversation is about mastering the art of leverage. And that's, you know, looking for what are those little lever points, the things that you could tweak that will change the direction of your life, the course of your relationship, your business. So with all the different places and all the different experiences you've had in each of these different areas, was there one lever point that changed your career? Was there one relationship that might have made a big shift? Um, I think it wasn't one relationship, but several. And it, it, I'll explain to you why. Because um, 
knowing that I'm a lifelong learner and knowing that I will continue along the path, um, I've always had the intention to leave the legacy behind. So make sure that there's a legacy to everything mm -hmm. I do. In. So I'm very entrepreneurial and entrepreneurs by definition are impatient and they always <laughs> want to try new things, right? But then if you always want to try new things, how do you scale what you've created? And, uh, and one of the things is that every time I've started something, I make sure that I have a partner. Mm -hmm. So at every moment that I've started anything, there's somebody else who continued uh, the project, right? So it's about finding... I don't like working alone. And so, um, and, and I also think the idea of the, the lone entrepreneur that takes on the whole world is a fallacy. And it's a very, it's a, I think it's a dangerous fallacy because I think we go faster together. So I've always found, and I've always encountered, actually has always found me the right partner at the right moment that we can create whatever it is we're creating together. And then as I move on, which I know I will, uh, that person continues uh, the path. Okay, so let's let's stop there because this is this is hugely powerful and this is a great learning opportunity for me. Um, in terms of being the the independent or not, you know, hoping that there could be some other support, but not knowing where it is. So so there's two things I'm I'm curious about. One is knowing who the right person is or putting it out there. Like, did you just you already had an intention that you wanted a partner. And so you put it there and, and you attracted it. That's one piece. And then was there um, a, was there a consciousness about knowing that at some point you were going to be going on to the next thing that this other person would take it forward? Was that something right. that was actually, you know? So I guess um, it's about knowing yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know that I'm, uh, I know myself and I know that, uh, again, I will continue the path. I will continue growing. So I'm, I don't see myself um, as an entrepreneur staying too long in one thing. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that was already an understanding. Mm -hmm. So there was no, for example, an example of Yeshi List. So Yeshi List, I literally, um, which is basically the largest green portal information and services in Turkey now. Mm -hmm. So when I landed in Turkey, I knew I had the intention to do something around the environment. I, wanted, I was looking for the gaps in the industry, uh, and two of the gaps were networking around green issues and information, uh -huh. like source of information. So if, at that moment when, when we started it, if you would go to Turkey and wanted to find any kind of product or service related to environmental issues, mm -hmm. you literally would only find a name a phone number and an address. Like there was no repository. There was no database of a country of millions of people. So that was kind of the gap. Um, but I did not want to do it by myself. So I do feel that in a way I put it out there because as I was sitting down in one of the mother's groups, um, you know, doing play dates uh -huh. with all these amazing <laughs> Turkish women, I found the one woman who came to me and she said, you know, I've always wanted to do something around environment. Let's talk. And I think at that moment as well, to be open, right? To be open to the people that show up. And we became excellent friends. She was trained by Al Gore. I made sure that she was trained by Al Gore as part of the climate project. We co-founded Yeshilis together. And now it's the largest portal of you know, products and service in Turkey. And likewise, we started together what's called Green Drinks Istanbul, which started with like 10 people getting together to talk about environmental issues and became like the largest kind of gathering of... Um, mm -hmm of environmental experts and wannabe experts uh, in Turkey and like monthly events, you know, like really catalyzing the power of the network. Uh, but I couldn't have done it without her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and now that I left, I know that there's something that continues, which okay. is very powerful. So the, the, one of the pieces that comes up and if I were to go through all the different elements of where you've been successful is network, you know, it's, right. it's, it's <laughs> the power of, of who you play with. And, right, right, <laughs> and so absolutely being able to, and, and so part of the conversation when I work with other people is how do you create that? Like, if, if you don't have access, and, and there's a way to get in front of anyone, but I want you to talk a little bit about um, because you have some massive networks that are empowering the world, and yep. so I, I guess I just want to go straight into you know what you're doing with the YGLs, um, yes. So, right. it, explain, explain what it is and World Economic Forum in Davos. Right. Specifically right. that and, and what you just experienced in China. China. So uh, the, just as a background, the World Economic Forum is the foremost um, aggregator in a way or platform for 
high level uh, multi sectoral leaders to to um, to come together in a very private spaces uh, to basically talk about the issues of the world and see how they can collaborate. It was founded in the 70s by Professor Klaus Schwab out of Switzerland, it's based in Geneva. And one of the things they're very famous for is their annual gathering in Davos, which as you know, is like the, the right. peak of kind of conferences in the world. Um, so the World Economic Forum, the way it's organized, is that they have created their own communities that help the WEF, um, uh, how you say, implement their vision throughout the year. So one of the, the strongest communities is the young global leaders. The young global leaders are people chosen um, before they turn 40 uh, from all over the world. It's a community that's 50-50 women by choice, by purpose. Uh, it's a community that is multi-sectorial, it's international, and the one thing we have in common is that we are people beyond our resume. What that means is that we've all gone beyond the call of duty to create spaces and possibilities to literally improve the state of the world. Um, and every year they choose around 150 young global leaders, and uh, we have a commitment of six years, and we're giving all the tools to basically scale our leadership and really create, like catalyze and, and speed up the, the positive impact that, that we have. So we're given network. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Wait, like if I ever tried to explain this, like when I say, Georgie, and this is what she does. But I mean, there was a sentence or two you just used that were just so powerful to describe what this group does and the impact that you have. I'm, I'm smiling because I, I, I love you. No, so, <laughs> Uh, so um, during six years, we're given everything. We're given the network. We're given educational programs. So for example, we have a two-week leadership program at Harvard that is designed for us. We go to Stanford, to Yale, all over the world, education programs. We attend all the regional summits of the web. So I just came from Panama, for example. Um, we, I was in Moscow last year. We have an annual summit, which is the one I just came from, and I, I'm happy to talk about that one. And then we get invited to Davos. So uh, basically, they take away every, any excuse you have to do whatever needs to be done. And it's a very safe network. Uh, the egos are left outside. And uh, we all want to help each other to, to scale and succeed. So it's basically my extracurricular activity. So besides work, <laughs> all I do is uh, YGL related. Um, and I was chosen in 2012, basically. And you, you brought a form of this to San Juan as well, right? You created the Global Shapers Hub in San Juan. Oh, so Another of the right, so the leaders are the ones we've done it, and now we, we need to grow. The Global Shapers is a community that uh, you get chosen before you turn 30. Uh, so we're looking for the next generation of leaders. It's organized by hubs around the world. So the idea is that they help each other. So unlike the YGLs, who we are all over the world, independent of Hub. You're breaking up a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, uh, the global shapers are founded as hubs around the same thing, but it's a no, no. It's no. Okay. Yes. 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 No? Okay. It's interesting. <laughs> so basically, I founded a global shaper community in San Juan. There's around over 300 cities of global shapers around the world, and the idea is that it's just. The WEF is, very, is brilliant in the sense of creating the next generation and getting the voice of the youth uh, inside all the deliberations uh, that the WEF does. So the, the, the Global Shapers get invited everywhere. So basically, you know, I grew up part of my life in Puerto Rico. If I would have had the Global Shaper hub in Puerto Rico, I would have been the happiest person. So I did it as a way to basically create that network in Puerto Rico and give them access to the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love them. I love my global shapers. Yeah. And so, so like one tangible um, outcome or result, of, like what's one project that's been put into the world because of, of um, YGL or? Oh my God. I'm it's sure just very hard. Every single project. 
as you know what, yeah you know what it is that uh, for a long time they tried to do the projects uh, that would come from within the YGL, right? So very much top down. So for example, uh, the crown prince of Norway, Hakon, he's a YGL, and uh, his whole thing is about dignity. So he created something called Global Dignity Day. So the idea is that if we could all understand what dignity means, uh, you know, it's kind of like empowering people to to be themselves and to show up in the world. So Global Dignity Day happens every year and most YGLs uh, do it in their own cities, Global Shapers do it. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful project to kind of scale um, consciousness, right? Um, the web right now is transitioning in the sense that it says, you know what, you guys are, there's so much energy in this network that to try to control it would be futile. So instead, let us give you the tools uh, to make sure that you can meet each other and that you can then do your own thing and then let us know what that is. So, for example, in the trip right now in China, uh, we had to go over questionnaires month before, that very detailed questionnaires, and they use algorithms to match us. So, for example, there were some sessions, because think about it, there were around 350 people in the China event, in the summit. So they made, with, through algorithms, they were able to sit us down on the table and suddenly create serendipity. So one of the things they're really doing more and more is how do you create serendipity within the network? And they, they really designed the programs to, to do so. So the networking kind of happens organically and by design, I which is very powerful. so curious about that. I'm yeah. so curious about that. So at least 10 more questions that I could take you on around that. What's interesting is in terms of the conversation about leverage to recognize that they even figured out to create anything that was like internal top down is nowhere near as powerful as leveraging all the other work that everybody's already doing on the home ground and being able to give them the tools to, to amplify those. Exactly. Absolutely. And the good thing as well, they let go one example, for example, uh, I shouldn't say this, but I will. Um, so one of the things that happened is that, this is a very, I mean, when you put together leaders, right, you get leadership, right? So you get friction. So we're not the kind of people that take top down, uh -huh. <laughs> form, right? So one thing that happened is that we were a little bit frustrated with the tools that we were given. So we started our own WhatsApp group. So, you know, we would get together and really support each other offline mm -hmm. from the official channels. And at the beginning, it created friction until they realized that, you know, it, that it was good to open the network to grow organically. And now what you see is that we have like an immediate response system. Literally, I could be anywhere in the world, post to this group and help each other. So for example, it could be something like yesterday, uh, somebody's friend was stuck in Mexico being evacuated. And then they asked, do you know anybody in Mexico? And of course, you know, the president of Mexico is a YGL. So immediately it's like, here you go, help your friend, you know? So anything from that to career advice, just this morning, somebody was having a meeting with the CEO and, uh, and she was being offered a new position that she didn't feel right about. In less than five minutes, we had a whole loop mm. giving like, amazing strategic advice and her meeting was perfect, right? So it's very beautiful because everybody shows up with that, in that sense of humbleness of saying, you know, I don't know, can you help me? And everybody help. So the, the conversation... So it's, it's a beautiful... It sounds incredible. The conversations I keep having recently are all about network. It's all about, you know, leveraging the power of the network. And have I... Do you know Pamela Reichman? Still out of network. The what? Pamela Reichman, who wrote... Yeah. So I yeah. just interviewed her oh, yeah. about all these power circles. So it's a, it's a okay. forum where you're just putting your information out. Like, it's, it's a... I'll have to learn more about exactly how you actually get the information out to your group. If it's just a, you're just posting in a forum area. Tools we have. So basically, I mean, the big difference is that um, it, it's, a, it's already a trusted curated network, right? And I think it goes back to what you were saying before. We all signed confidentiality agreement. I mean, these are some of the most powerful people in the world. And if you don't have that trust, that commitment to trust and confidentiality, it doesn't work. So that's level one. And so that is kind of a given. And then we all use different tools to get together. So offline, obviously, is the events. So there's a commitment to see each other and to be there for each other. And then offline, online, we use everything. I mean, WhatsApp has been the, the most mm -hmm. uh, 
useful one that we have, but you know, but but just like any network, self-organized, that part is self-organized. We're looking for new tools to make it even more efficient. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Okay. This is <laughs> thank you very much. I love hearing about these things. Can I say something that when you were talking before about network about myself as well? I, I think that. this is something it's something that my husband says all the time. And he said, um, like, I love people. I genuinely, so the curiosity is not only about things, but also about people. Mm -hmm. so I'm very curious about uh, everybody's experience. And when you have genuine curiosity, people open up to you. Mm -hmm. And then people open up to you. I operate at the level of like visual systems. So I can immediately make the, it's very similar to you. I can immediately make the connections and I give the connections away. Exactly. So I think the biggest difference is that I think there's a shift from being transactional, which is a very hard, and, and honestly, it's, it doesn't resonate with me, it's being transactional to be in relationship based, to really care about people that you meet. And even, you know what, in, in terms of maximizing, if you go to an event, one thing I do, I don't go to an event, um, I don't know if it's good or bad, but I don't go pre-plan who I want to meet. Yeah. I literally show up. I showed up at the, at the YGL in China. This is a real example. I showed up. I had seen the list of people who were there. I'm like, you know what? I said, you know, this person, this person. And then I said, and anybody else, whoever needs to meet me, I will meet that person. And I showed up super relaxed, super in the moment. And everybody I had seen on that list mm -hmm. showed up at my table. <laughs> and, uh, and everybody else who I met, that's I just perfect. have like amazing conversations. It's also about being in the moment. Uh, there's nothing wrong about being transactional. Obviously, if you have a business imperative and you're looking for something specific, you know, by all means, go to LinkedIn, find that person, reach out. But I'm thinking more in like the broader kind of, you know, what's going to make your network to be more powerful, actually. So a deeper connection to your network. So one example, I don't have anybody in LinkedIn that I don't know personally. Mm -hmm. So it's also about the quality of your network, mm -hmm. uh, not the numbers. So I think those are the few themes that I, I would say I'm, I've been consistently, um, you know, slowly, slowly um, learning about myself and accepting it and owning it and doing it and it works. I, I completely, completely agree with you. I, I've been um, mindful about my LinkedIn list forever <laughs> because yeah. for some reason, like, I, I just, I, I'm not willing and open no. to just like everybody because that's not the point. I don't, that's not the point. And, yeah. and for me, when I meet somebody, my biggest question is how can I support you? Yes. And so exactly. I figure that out, like, okay, this is what they're working on just like you. I'm thinking of, oh, they need to know this person, they need to go to this event. Like there's, you know, 10 ways that, that we can support each other. And then it's a completely different experience. Exactly. Like, no, absolutely. And it always comes back to you no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. So. It's not about them that you, you have to be open to that moment and it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. And you can't predict where it's going to happen. I love that they somehow are trying to predict serendipity. Like I, I need to learn more about how they did that. If there was personality profiling or you're amazing. It's personality. You add uh, different, you, um, interests yeah. beyond that are not in your resume. Uh, they have like a long questionnaire and they have, you know, and they match you and, uh, and all the matches were just perfect. And they also did, Another thing they've started to do is uh, circles that are closer geographically. So mm -hmm. circle, group of eight people that are closer in geography so they can get to, they can continue to meet with each other. Um, and then the other thing is they allow for serendipity just by giving us time and space to hang out, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, I mean, we were by the Great Wall of China, so... We have a couple of hours and suddenly it's like, who wants to go for a trek? And then there you go, you know, trekking for two hours with people, conversing. So there's one thing they do is that uh, they say, you know, the, the family that plays together stays together. So there's a lot of play involved, mm -hmm. which is very on american <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like having time to just be together, right? But no there's, there's, no, there's no way to... Um, you can't actually make anything more impactful or more powerful than, than getting to have fun and sharing with people. This week is actually Denver Startup Week, and we had um, an amazing panel on Wednesday. It was uh, Women Who Startup. We had eight, eight people, That's and great. one of them was uh, Kathleen Warner. Do you know her? She no. Startup America. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met her. I've met her. She's actually, like, <laughs> I love yeah, yeah. 
So, so, so met her and then met Dave McClure, who's like 500 startups guy. And somehow I went, they convinced me to go to karaoke with them. So the best way to, you know, to really be able to, to become friends with someone is to do something that is not what's not or business or, and it's almost like, you know, wanting your New Year's Eve to be amazing. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't predict it, you know, it just, it happens. And then, you know, you can't also figure out that I need this person to be this. Yes. Five years down the road, it somehow transforms and emerges into this next better thing. And I like what you're saying. There's a recent article that I'm really, uh, I was fascinated about. It's kind of how different cultures view time, right? So I don't know if you read it. Very cool. So the idea is, um, I mean, as you probably know, I'm Latin. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And and, um, so it's beautiful because it's sort of like in in Western, so in the American world and Northern uh, Nordic, uh, you know, time is linear. The past is gone. The present is just like, money and the future is like so you need to plan and really like time is money that's it so you don't waste time you don't enjoy time you everything is to maximize time Mm. and then it's funny because there's a visual in the article it's a fantastic article and then you see every different like culture so you have then the latin culture and then it's beautiful because then time is about relationships so uh, so even though you can have a schedule everything like flows (laughs) into each other i love this Great article. And then there's cultures like the Asian culture where time is cyclical. So when you're doing business with different cultures, when you understand how they see time, um, it, it, it makes the conversation easier. But, but I think what, what um, because the network of the WEF is by definition international, mm-hmm. um, it's beautiful how they're able to do both. So, you know, on the, on the one hand, you're very planned. And then on the other hand, it's like, you know what, let's, let's give some space for the relationship. So I think there's a lot of beauty also on seeing, you know, on, on questioning how we're viewing time, how we're using time. And if we can incorporate different perspectives on how time should be used, right? So play is one of them, you know, mm-hmm. don't feel guilty that you're socializing or playing or like yesterday, I have one YGL staying at home and, you know, we were walking in the high line. So Mm-hmm. And we were having an amazing conversation. He's basically the Jamie Oliver of Brazil. And I was thinking like, how can I help you? And then I was like, you know, I have this lunch and, you know, like very fixed. And I'm like, you know what? I just want to stay with you. I'm in the moment. I want to continue this moment. Let me postpone the other one. My other friend is also very flexible. So I stayed with him. So it's also being in the moment, right? Like not, I think in terms of building relationships, not be like rushing through the relationship. There's a moment for everything, but open up to what I'm also hearing from you and, and I'm hearing it from your own experience and I want to acknowledge and commend you for this and I think it's amazing that they're doing it at the, the organizational level as well is that there is an, an element of trust that right. everything is going to unfold as it will and you know when you are creating a conference I don't know how many days or how long it was but to have these leaders to have any of you who have schedules the way you do get together and put any amount of time and any other work, everything on hold, it's a big deal. So to get whatever you need to accomplish and to allow those relationships to flourish, big, big thing. For you to be able to be present enough with yourself to recognize, okay, this, what is happening and showing up right now, right here, is most it's important. important. And yeah. let everything else go, it's a big deal. And I feel like, I feel really thankful and blessed that the conversations I get to have with people, that I get to connect and, um, be friends with people like you who are doing amazing things in this world, but are also incredibly um, conscious and aligned. And then I can even say these words because God, like five years ago, 10 years ago, people would just like kick me out. Like, what? I don't know. <laughs> Love, fear, what? <laughs> can you shut up? We have, we, time is money, we gotta go. Terrible, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I would love to see that article. If you could, um, yeah, I'll send it to you. If you send it to me, that'd be great, because then I'll, I'll post it at the bottom of yeah, the yeah. MVPs. So I want to ask you about shopping, and I want to yes. talk about you know, how you've created a platform which allows multiple people to leverage what they have. So, And I can give you my explanation of it, but you're giving brands and you're giving publishers and publishers that are even from bloggers to the Condé Nast and Hearst of the world, and you're giving the brands a way to actually sell and promote through the artists, the creative ones, 
And there's a commerce component in this as well. So you've got people being able to buy directly from the, the sites that they know and love instead of being kicked off to another place. If I love the shirt that you're wearing and I'm on your blog, I can go buy directly from you. And what's right. really cool is the shopping cart follows you. Right. So I'm curious to see like how, how are you leveraging the relationships with brands? With like, I'm assuming this has changed their relationships with each other as well. Um, you know what? That was the intention. It's taking, it's, it's, the conversation has been harder um, than, we, than I expected because there's understandably a, um, a resistance to collaborate. I mean, there's still uh, that zero-sum mentality. And, uh, and so the people that we've identified to partner with us, um, in a way, they, they want to own experience before they share with the rest of the world so there's like the business imperative that is um how you say um reacting against the idea of you know actually if you open it up to mm. share the universal card oh, everybody you're, will disrupting. You're, you're disrupting and of course there's always resistance exactly so but um but again like you say we you know the people like on the nas for example has been a great partner we're doing the shoppable advertising with them mm-hmm. and then, uh the other thing from what i've realized as well is then Um, So how do you flow, right? So you have that resistance. Do you go head on or do you flow? So one of the things that we've done is say, okay, we are doing the the publisher tool with those that respond to it. We're doing the advertising with those that respond to it. What else can we do with the technology to leverage the technology? Uh, So one of the things that we kept hearing was that the brands wanted to have the universal card for themselves Mm -hmm. to come together with other brands. So it's interesting. The publishers don't want to play together. The brands want to play wow. together. Yes. So the brands basically said, we need a universal card uh, because we're not selling anything online in our sites. So brands basically are only selling, I think it's around 5% of the total e-commerce sales comes from their own sites. Because of course, you know, you rather go to a place that has many brands as opposed to going to multiple single brands. So one of the new products that we're working on, which is uh, we brought on board the um, XEO of Saks as an investor, as an advisor, all the team of Red Antler, the Trout team is creating a, a new high luxury um, e-commerce destination site that aggregates all the brands. Mm-hmm. But because of the amazing technology, the brands get to keep the margin, the clients and get to show their full collection the way they intended. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think from a business perspective as well, it's, it's about... Um, knowing what assets you have and being flexible. I think as an entrepreneur, just be flexible, flow, listen, get feedback, and then find the opportunities See, where things can go through. That's, that, it, that's such a, okay, go ahead. No, no, no. So, and the cool thing is that because what will happen is that once we launch the e-commerce, we will get to use the publisher widget with our e-commerce <laughs> in the publishers. We'll get to use it with the advertising. So in a way, it's like, it's a way to go <laughs> It will go stealth into the publishers back again. Okay. Saying, Here you go. So I, I love this. And I, I want to, this, this is almost the extension of the conversation that we're having. This is good business is being willing to listen and flow. And so when you talk about like, you could leverage your technology, you could have it be this one way, or you could really start to look at what's the feedback we're getting. Is there another way around this? And look ahead. Yeah. And everyone talks about like, oh, you know, pivot, pivot, but maybe pivot is just means listen and just like look for like, where is there the least amount of resistance and where can you flow? Right. And it comes back from, to networking. So, because oh. one of the things is that um, I love the, the founder of Patagonia uh-huh. so that you should, he, he has a, a great book and he calls himself, he has an MBA that is basically, he says, I manage by absence. He says, a company, a, company should, a company should always have somebody who's out in the world, getting data, meeting people, getting feedback, and bringing it back to the company. So I think from a company perspective, it's always important to have somebody that's outside. So I'm usually that person. I'm mm-hmm. outside. I go to the world. I see what's going on. Bring back feedback. So pivot doesn't happen in a vacuum. You cannot just like pivot because you think that you should pivot. Is are you reaching out to your network? Are you talking to people? Are you interacting? Are you getting information just by being curious and then feed it back to the company and then make the strategic decisions? So all these things happen because I was out there, right? So at the beginning, it was very hard to negotiate me being out there all the time. I mean, all these trips, all these things. I understand that a lot of people 
that's why we become very transactional, right? Because you say, okay, if I'm going to this networking event, I must, I must have like, you know, three clients by the time I come back. It doesn't work like that because you also need to see networking as exchange of information, right? So it's not, you're exchanging information, you're exchanging knowledge and, uh, and then you fit it back into the business. So I think as a good business practice is to let people, let some of your people to be out there, to not necessarily be at the office. Oh, anyway. I talk, no, no, no. I want to talk about that more because I know, I know Sarah Enline, she does this with Sweet Ride that she's, she is um, an ambassador. You know, she's out, she's speaking on every single panel. She's all around the world. And when you look at it, it's like, well, how does this actually translate, translate to selling fair trade yeah. everywhere? But it yeah. does because she's, she's this advocate. So it's interesting for me to, one, hear that you gave yourself permission and then requested it. And then there's actually, there is a serious business case for why that works in terms of being able to um, incorporate all the other elements that you wouldn't get if you were siloed. And it's interesting because I'll look at something and I'll say, okay, well, I'm always looking to convince myself why this makes sense. The ROI, right? The ROI. Gonna, you know, all right, this is in line with what the business should be and, and this definitely matches up. So of course, um, in terms of uh, Yvonne Chenard, I, I didn't read the book, but I read something recently about it was a way to actually check in with massive groups very quickly. And he, I think, had each of them give him, like they each had like their five minute check in with their group and they each got like, I don't know, one or two sentences because he was basically sitting on the side of a rock, you know, a yeah. 10,000, wow. you know. Yeah. yeah, and he, the only way for him to know what was going on with his company is that, you know, everybody had to get everything into like this quick little, and all he could basically absorb is this list of sound bites. But it gave them a process a way to check in and um and that's now being used with all these other companies that's cool that's very cool i love him he's an inspiration <laughs> but yeah i think you know the, the beautiful thing is that now that we're in the middle of fundraising and um it took me a while to convince my partners that all these things made sense and uh and it's funny because now i have long memory so i know exactly i'm like you know <laughs> this person this came from this, 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 this. So now they're seeing the ROI, uh, but it, that wasn't the intention, right? So I think that's the difference. And the fact that you're like, you're trying to raise money at the same time, you're not just answering. You know, this kind of goes back to you being really savvy about having a partner. <laughs> yes, because you need to have a partner. Because you have a partner, and then they can be like, you know, yes. your big vision and your strategic partnerships. And so, okay, I want to I wanna ask you, Two or three other questions. One, I want to ask you about any secret weapons that you have. So this could what? be secret weapons. Sometimes the people I'm, working, I'm talking with have a piece of technology or there's some amazing thing that has, they use it every day and it's like the one thing they can't live without. Um, Pamela said it was her nanny. You know, it, it, she was like, the, the, the hands down, what is that? Your iPhone is the thing? You got to give me more than that. Come on. So... <laughs> I, I I sleep with my iPhone. I I I sleep with it. Person that measures your brain waves. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't like. I've, I've done that one. I don't like those things. No, I just sleep next to it. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely technology. So it's is there, a, is there a, like what are some of the things you absolutely use all the time? Of. Oh. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, lately WhatsApp, when it comes to network and just very quick knowledge of anything I need, it's uh -huh. within the, using WhatsApp, we have a special group uh, for the YGLs that it's a great story. So WhatsApp, as you may know, the, the limit in a group is 50 people. Uh, but we have an insight in WhatsApp, of course. And basically one of the co-founders of WhatsApp enters our numbers by hand into this special group. So we have now over 120 people in this YGL group and it keeps growing. And it's all entered by hand from the headquarters in Silicon Valley. Not very efficient, but at least you have a critical mass of people. So I would say lately, uh, WhatsApp, Trello is the one tool I've been using a lot for project management. So I've been very consistent in terms of downloading everything I need to do to liberate space. Um, I, I'm always online. I don't know how to, I mean, it's just, um, I'm very quick online. And are you looking for a specific app or something? Uh, well, well you, you gave me, you gave me WhatsApp. And so much, you know, if there's anything else, any other, like, I don't know, 
Any other secret weapon? You're, you're like Miss Global Traveler. Is there any other like secret? Maybe there's a travel trick. There's a travel trick. Um, I, okay, one, one travel trick is that I bought this, very practical for a woman, I bought this great uh, necessaire that is from Tumi, and it's always packed. So whenever I need to, it's a basically a very unfoldable necessaire where you put all your essentials, and so it's always packed. So if you tell me tomorrow I need to go to Boulder, it's ready to go. So that's why I'm very efficient when it comes to traveling. Um, so yeah, on the practical thing, I would say that, but it's always technology. So I have tools for everything on, I mean, I'm happy to share it, but that's what I'm saying. It's my phone. Uh, Music is one of my tools as well. That is for myself. So I do a lot of music. So I'm immersed myself in music, uh, meditation as well. Mm -hmm. Always trying to exercise. There's a new, very cool thing that is a seven minute workout that, you know, you can do this seven minute workout anywhere you are. Mm -hmm. You check it out in the New York Times. It's very cool. It's like very um, interval training, seven minutes. I feel and like I've heard about this, but uh, okay. look, that's, that is a secret weapon. Yes. Have your bag packed and your seven minute workout. And you can be like, <laughs> to exercise. So like we need to definitely be fit and healthy to be able to be present. So I have, I have one last question for you. And the idea is that this is interactive and it's all about creating support. And so is there one thing, like what is it that we can support you with? Because this will eventually go out and ideally we'll have, um, you know, if there's any comments or anything that you want to receive from people or if you want them to go somewhere, do you need them to be shopping with their cards yet? What is it that we could do to, that would support you? Hmm. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm, from the bottom of my heart, it's just the one thing that you could do to support me is to, to I, I mean, to support yourself, to be open to this, like, seriously, because I think if more people were interacting with each other this way, uh, it would be much more powerful. Let me give you one example. I, mm-hmm. I know the issue of women. I've noticed that um, with pain, that there's a generational difference between how we're supporting each other. So I found that the older generation of women, unfortunately, they had to go through a lot uh, mm-hmm. to get to where they're at. And I found the attitude to be that because they went through all that, why should they, why should they help us, right? <sighs> So um, maybe it's New York City, I don't know. But one thing I would say, you know, as a woman is do it. Just, you know, just open yourself to relationship, open yourself to not being transactional, open yourself to playing together, open yourself to helping each other without even thinking about what's in it for you, right? So I think because the more people are like that, the better it will be for everybody. Uh, So um, that's what I would say that. And also don't take it personal if somebody doesn't. You know, it's not a reason to stop being that way. And uh, I'm learning, I'm learning that lesson. And uh, I think I'm halfway through learning that lesson. Um, I think you've got it. I think you've got the lesson. I can't wait till you move to Boulder. I'm just kidding. I know you're I'm not. <laughs> I'm dying to move to Boulder. So. That's okay. I need you in New York. <laughs> Absolutely. But this was, this is wonderful. And I love your last response. What, what, what a blessing that would be if everybody showed up that way. And as women, what was it? Um, oh, I'm trying to remember. Madeline Albright said, there's a place in hell for women that don't support each other. Yes. <laughs> so basically, the opposite of that, do everything we can to support each other in, in experiencing heaven on earth right this minute. Wow, I sound like hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Oh, that's a great way to finish. I love that. <laughs> okay, my dear, I'm going to say goodbye and um, I'll see you on the other side. But thank you so much for. Of course, it's great seeing you. Thank you. <laughs> see you. Bye.